got another batch of uh, Year 12 spectroscopy questions you can use to test yourself with. So the link to the questions, as always, is in the description of the video. So just click on that, have a go at the questions, and then play the video for the answers. Okay, so the first question, before I go into the answer, I'm just going to go through the sort of processing that you're going to need to do as you're um, looking at this sort of information. And then we'll get on to the answer. So we've got six alcohols to choose from. So the first thing I've done is worked out their MRs. You'll obviously appreciate why that's relevant. So you can see these numbers in red are the MRs of these alcohols. The other thing you can do is establish what kind of alcohols they are. And again, that's very important. So we've got butantool is secondary, 2-methylpentanthriol is secondary, propan-1-ol is primary, and then these three, ethane-1,2-diol is primary, the next one is tertiary, and the last one, propan-2-ol, is secondary. Okay, so the alcohol E is heated under reflux with the oxidizing agent excess acidified potassium dichromate 6, organic product F is isolated. And then the mass spectrum of E is shown and the infrared spectrum of F is shown. So what sort of things would we pick out from the mass spectrum of E first of all? Well the peak furthest to the right is really important, that's your molecular ion peak or M plus peak for short. That's telling us that because the M over Z value is 60, the MR of the alcohol is 60. So hopefully you can see how that ties in with this information here. So that's why I worked out the MRs of all of those. The other thing I've done is kind of try to explain or try to make sense of what's gone on going from the molecule to this tall peak here at 45, MOZ 45. Well, there's a drop in mass of 15, so a loss of 15 means that this um, original molecule has lost a CH3 group. Okay, so moving on to the infrared spectrum of product F. So remember, this is formed when alcohol E is oxidized. There's two areas really to focus on. It's this peak here is important. So that's at around about 1700 centimeters to minus one. Strong absorption, almost goes to the bottom. That indicates the presence of a C double bond O. Then we go to around about sort of 3000, 3500, well, we haven't got a typical absorption for an alcohol because that absorbs sort of between 3, 2 and 3, 6. So around about there. Okay. Now, this absorption here isn't due to an alcohol OH. Uh, it's too sort of small for that. It, it, alcohol OH would kind of look like that. So it's not that. Um, and it certainly isn't carboxylic acid absorption which is 2,500 to 3,3. Obviously, you get all this from your data sheet. So there's nothing in sort of that region there. So you'd expect a broad absorption like that. Well, we haven't got that. So there's no OH in this molecule. So you can see what I've written here is that these are literally just notes that I would encourage students to make as the process and the information. Haven't even got into the answer yet. So I'm saying F must be a ketone because it's been formed by reflux oxidation. So that means E must have been a secondary alcohol. If E had been a primary alcohol, we would have got a carboxylic acid when you oxidize it under reflux. Okay, so the answer. So what I'm saying is the molecular ion peak at M over Z60 shows that the MR of E is 60. So I'm narrowed down now to just propan one all or propan 2 all and then the infrared absorption at about 1700 cm to the minus 1 shows the presence of the C double bond O. So always quote the wave number and the bond that's causing the absorption. And then since oxidation was carried out under reflux, E must therefore be a secondary alcohol. If it had been a primary alcohol, a carboxylic acid would form, which would give a broad absorption between 2500 and 3300 cm to the minus 1 due to the OH group. Okay. So we're basically, in that statement there, we're saying why E has to be a secondary alcohol. So moving on to substance F now. So F is the product of, of oxidation. That is a ketone. So E has to be propan 2 -ol. F has to be propanone. And then I'm just 
going back to the mass spectrum, now I know what I'm talking about. It's easy to sort of identify the fragment peak. The fragment peak at M over Z45 indicates the loss of a CH3 group. Therefore, the fragment's due to this um, ion here. And don't forget, you need a positive charge for anything that's picked up by a mass spectrometer. And then finally, we had to give the equation for the oxidation of E. So you could either do it in structural formula like that or skeletal formula like that. Even displayed if you could be bothered to draw out all the bonds. But I would probably go for something like skeletal. Moving on to question two now, quite similar actually to question one, um, less to process I suppose because we only have the infrared spectrum, we don't have anything else. So we're told the branched chain alcohol J, there's its molecular formula, was heated again under reflux with the excess oxidising agent and it forms K and that's the infrared spectrum of K. So straight away I'm doing the same sort of thing. I'm looking at this area, this area. So what can I say? I can say that we've got a very strong absorption around about the 1700 mark. So we have got a C double bond O present. Obviously I'll write all this up at, um, underneath, but I would literally just sketch that onto the, um, onto the spectrum as you're thinking through the information. I'm looking here. There's no sort of curved absorption, certainly no broad absorption between two and a half and three, three. So I can safely say there's no OH bond in K. They're just CHs. So because it was done under reflux, I can say J can't be primary, a like primary alcohol, because you would have got a carboxylic acid and we haven't because of the lack of the OH group. So we can go into the answer now. So we've got to determine the structure for the branch chain alcohol J and compound K and explain, link it all to the uh, evidence given. And then write an equation for the reaction of J when heated under reflux with excess um, oxidising agent to form K. So same, similar to before, IR spectrum shows that around about 1700, same at the minus one, we've got the presence of a C double bond O. Since oxidation was carried out under reflux, J must therefore be a secondary alcohol because a primary would have produced a carboxylic acid. So same sort of statement as the previous question. K is therefore a ketone. Now remember, it's got to be a branch chain uh, alcohol with five carbons. So you've got a main chain of um, four carbons. So the, there's only one place the branch can be, and that's there. If it was here, that would be a tertiary alcohol, which obviously can't be oxidized. So that's J. So when you oxidize this, the OH group goes to the C double bond O group, so that's K. And the equation, again, I've gone skeletal. Uh, it's my preferred way of doing it. So one mole of oxidizing agent, one mole of water. Okay, so moving on to question three. I've gone for a non-organic uh, question because obviously spectroscopy can be used in inorganic substances as well. So we've got this question about sulfur exists as molecules SN and we've got the mass spectrum. So you can see I'm annotating straight away. Always encourage the students to do that. The peak furthest to the right is the M plus peak or the molecular ion peak. And then look at the uh, first question, state the M over Z value of the molecular ion. So you do need to know the significance of the molecular ion peak, which one it is. So it's two, five, six. The formula for the molecule of sulfur, so we were told that all of the sulfur atoms are the same isotope. So you can see from that very first peak there, the M over Z32, that must be the isotope when it's by itself. You can see that it must be isotope um, 32. So it's S32 we're dealing with. So what would be the formula of this molecule of sulfur? Well, the whole molecule weighs 256. The single isotope is 32. 32 goes into 2568 times, so it was S8. The formula of the fragment iron peak with M over Z128, well that's obviously half of 256, so that's S4, plus, don't forget the charge, um, so that's that bit of the question. And then part B, sample L is analysed using mass spectrometry, mass spectrum shown below, and it's just a typical calculate the relative atomic mass of L, answer so has to be the one decimal place. So we've got the four isotopes, relative isotopic masses, percentage abundance, so it's the sum of the isotopic mass times the abundance, plus that, plus that, and so on, divided by 100, because we've got percentage abundance, 
And so at the one decimal place, you should have got, hopefully got, 195.2.